want to update you on several arrests that we have made over this weekend that I think uh, is just uh, from some outstanding detective work and outstanding work by uh, many of our officers, um, which actually were able to solve three homicide cases. <clears throat> so I'll start with one on February 25th uh, at about uh, 1130 hours uh, in the evening. Uh, we responded to a report of a shooting that occurred in the light rail system. Uh, it started out at around 4th and Jackson when the initial call came out. Uh, and then uh, ended up proceeding to the University uh, uh, Street uh, exit. And uh, what we ended up finding was a black male uh, victim uh, that was shot. Um, we were you know, uh, doing a lot of work to try and figure out who uh, had done that. Uh, and on uh, Sunday or Saturday, uh, the subject, uh, who is a 21-year-old male from SeaTac, uh, turned himself into our homicide detectives at SPD headquarters, and we were able to uh, make that arrest and book that person for investigation of murder. Then uh, last night, or su I should say Sunday morning, uh, I was actually at the homicide scene uh, over a, um, at about one o'clock in the morning uh, in Belltown, uh, where we had two females uh, that were in a disturbance and an argument. Uh, the officers were able to locate a 33-year-old female uh, near the scene, and we were able to take that person into custody, uh, and that person was eventually booked uh, into, uh, for investigation of murder, uh, as well as investigation of attempted assault in the first degree as well. But really, one of the cases that I just wanted to just extremely highlight, or highlight uh, that I think is just extraordinary police work uh, that uh, went down was we had a homicide scene that was done uh, at around uh, the Seattle Town Hall in the alley. And at that uh, location, uh, we located a ho homeless victim uh, that had probably been sleeping there. And um, it, at that time, uh, we were trying to figure out, you know, who had, uh, you know, done the actual act of the homicide. Uh, we had CSI respond. We had a bunch of different units respond, trying to get uh, as much information as we could. Uh, this last week, we were uh, spending a lot of resources to actually uh, see uh, if this person was going to uh, covet the area again. Uh, was this person going to uh, visit this area and potentially commit another homicide? And uh, one, of our, one of our detectives spotted a person uh, with an object. Uh, that person uh, took off running from uh, the detectives, and uh, he dropped an uh, object, which end up later being recovered was an ax. Uh, through great uh, detective work, through great uh, investigate, painstaking uh, investigation, they were able to identify a suspect in that case, and we were able to make an arrest in that case. We have served a search warrant on that person's place. We're hoping that we will get, uh, continue to gather more evidence um, that will make this case as strong as it can be. And uh, it, but to have, in just in this one weekend, have three cases where we're able to solve three homicides and take three suspects, uh, book them into jail for investigation of murder is extraordinary police work by the detectives and our officers that are going out and trying to make sure that they put and collect evidence in each of these scenes. So, questions? So, going back to the light rail, 21-year-old suspect, um, was he known to you? Had you identified him as a potential <coughs> suspect before he turned himself in? We had uh, worked on the evidence, and so I won't uh, necessarily say we've identified him uh, specifically. Uh, we know that he had uh, at one point fled probably in between that 4th and Jackson to University uh, Street exit. And so uh, through that, we were working on the evidence to, to being able to uh, pull it together to actually have eventually have an arrest warrant. And uh, this gentleman uh, knew that this probably was going to end up happening and decided to turn himself in. So skipping to the town hall homicide. So did, did, was the victim just sleeping when he was attacked? <clears throat> that appears what, that, that's what it appears, is that the victim was sleeping um, and then was attacked at some, uh, in, in probably in an unprovoked way. Uh, I believe the uh, injury was uh, to the head. Um, and does not appear that there was any struggle uh, in that case, but uh, that's where the detectives are still piecing all of the evidence together. But to then having uh, this person come out, and this was 3.50 in the morning on Saturday morning, 
when the detective was around three, uh, three something in the morning, when the detective actually spotted this person uh, walking through Freeway Park, and then this person then fled from us. So he was potentially so he looking. Contact him. He just started running. He, they saw the uh, the vest come out, uh, and he took off. And so I think that that potentially stopped what would be another homicide. And I think that having those detectives uh, going out, knowing that maybe this person might uh, visit this area again, that's extraordinary. And, uh, and so it was a reason why we needed to be able to show and highlight the amazing work that there are, our detectives are doing. So were they just doing surveillance in that area? They were doing surveillance in that area. Um, Chief, it sounds kind of unusual that someone, like a crime of passion, would get mad at someone and you do them harm. It almost sounds like the beginning of a serial killer if, they, if he didn't know these people. Well, you know, and that's the stuff that we're always looking at. Uh, and that's what is going to make this case, you know, really uh, unique was why would this person come back out to a, another location um, and having a weapon that could possibly uh, do another homicide. So I think that that uh, is what our detectives were really trying to make sure that they were going to try to stop. Um, and just kind of, I think just even just from... The, the work that they were putting together, they were just sitting and saying, hey, like, can we spend some time and go into this area where uh, we had that one homicide and maybe we can um, see if we can get any more evidence out of it. And so th their intuition really worked well. And, uh, and I think that, you know, we'll be able to work hard on collecting that evidence and, and putting a good case together. Did the uh, detective actually see the weapon or did it just the guy just start running off and that's attracted attention? I believe that the, they saw what, believe, what was a, a big object, and then he discarded it uh, as he took off, and then that is uh, that we were able to recover that weapon and start putting the pieces together on the case. So does it appear then that this suspect was deliberately targeting members of the unhoused community then? <coughs> that is, that's a good question. It still is yet to, uh, for us to develop. We do know that uh, the victim that, uh, in this case is homeless. Um, and so it is a concern that uh, he was back out in around the same location uh, and uh, potentially looking at targeting. We don't know if it would be homeless or anybody walking in that area uh, during that time of night. So Are any other, that, one more question? Are you looking to see if he's uh, connected to any other similar crimes that happened? Yeah, just in like all other investigations, we look uh, for previous uh, cases to see if there's any uh, links or potential associations of of how people uh, have, uh, how murder cases have happened. And so we'd constantly do that, and that's one of the things that we're going to do in this case as well. And you mentioned that you guys have a, uh, a search warrant for, uh, of his, of his uh, house or home? Of his right. place. At, are we too soon that he, uh, he's not in house? Uh, right now we believe that he has a place of residence. Uh, does not appear to be unhoused, but uh, that will also be part of the investigation. But again, that it, I, I just think we were able to acquire in a very, very short period of time a lot of information that allowed us to lead him to uh, this potential suspect in this case, and I think it was really, really good uh, police work. Do you have an age for the <clears throat> Uh I believe a 25-year-old uh, male, uh, obviously from Seattle. He is a Seattle resident. I believe he, uh, the, the, the residence that we have is a Seattle residence, okay. uh, not too far from uh, the homicide at the Seattle Town Hall. And uh, where exactly did the homicide happen? Did it happen on a certain, it was like in front of the Town Hall or on a certain? I believe there's an alleyway uh, just uh, uh, on the, I'm not sure which side of it, I believe the, the west side uh, of, of the Town Hall. And that's where I believe the person was uh, sleeping and known to sleep there um, routinely. And then the, uh, the suspect was found in Three Bay Park. Uh, yes. Yeah, so well, we weren't. We didn't take him into custody. We actually lost sight of him. It was the evidence that we were able to accumulate that led us to an arrest yesterday uh, with our SWAT team um, and other units to actually make an arrest uh, at his at his uh, I believe his residence or place of residence outside. Outside. Yep. So, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Take care.